Welcome to chapter 8. This lesson is for section 8.1, adding and subtracting polynomials. Our goal is that we can classify, add, and subtract polynomials. Before we talk about what a polynomial is, let's talk about what a monomial is. So take a moment and write down this definition. A monomial is a real number, a variable, or a product of a real number, and one or more variables with whole number exponents. You'll see what these look like in a moment. Now we're going to be talking about what a degree of a monomial is. It is the sum of the exponents of its variables. Remember, sum just means we are adding. So you can write that down. Adding the exponents. Now, a degree of a non-zero constant is zero, aka if the number 2 was written, that degree would be zero because there are no um, variables there. If there was a variable, it would have a degree zero, obviously, and then, you know, we anything raised to the zero power is equal to 1. If we have just the regular number zero, then that has no degree at all. Okay, let's take a look at example one. We have 5x. The x has an invisible 1 in the exponent spot, so make sure you put that there. The exponent is 1, so therefore the degree is 1. Remember, we're always going to be looking at the exponents. That's it for part A. Part B, we have 6x to the third, y to the second. Well, the exponents are 3 and 2, so what we're going to do is add them together. Their sum is 5, because 3 plus 2 equals 5, and that means our degree is 5. Last one, we just had the regular number 4. Um, technically, there's like a 4x to the 0 next to it. Remember, I just talked about this. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. So the degree of a non-zero constant is always 0. Degree equals 0. So remember, basically what we're doing here is we're looking at the exponents of the variables. And if there's more than one variable, then we are going to add those exponents to get the degree. Okay, now let's practice adding and subtracting monomials. Remember, monomials are just one term. So this is a monomial and this is a monomial. Um, let's see. What, well, they are like terms. That's good. They both have x squared, so we just have to add the numbers in front. And that gives us 8x squared. The next one, in part b, there is an invisible 1 in front, so make sure you write that. Basically what we're doing is 4 minus 1, and that is 3, and then you rewrite the variable, x to the third y. So the answer is 3x to the third y. In the next one, we have negative 6 and positive 11. Well, negative 6 plus 11, or... 11 minus 6 is 5, and then you just rewrite the 4x, or sorry, x to the 4th. So we're, what we're just doing is looking at the coefficients in front, basically. And lastly, we have 2 minus 7, that would give us a negative 5, and then you rewrite the x squared y to the 4th. So when we are combining like terms, just look at the numbers in front called the coefficients and add as they tell us to do, and then just rewrite the variable after. All right, we are ready to talk about what a polynomial is now that we have talked about what monomials are. A polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials. An example of this would be 3x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 1. As you can see, we have four monomials there. One, two, three, and four. It doesn't have to be four, that's just a random example. Now, to talk about the degrees of a polynomial, the degree of a polynomial is the same as the degree of the monomial with the greatest exponent. 
the same as the degree of the monomial with the greatest exponent. So let's take a look at this chart below, and there's a couple things you need to fill in. First of all, we have polynomial 6. There's no variables whatsoever, so we learned a couple slides ago that the degree of a non-zero constant is always zero. And this is a monomial because there's only one term involved. Um, and that's it for the first row. So now let's take a look at 5x plus 9. The degree is 1 because there is an invisible 1 by that x. Um, and there are two terms, so therefore we're going to call it a binomial. I believe you already know that bi means two. Uh, an example of this would be a bicycle with two wheels. Let's take a look at the next row. 4x squared plus 7x plus 3. The degree is 2 because the greatest exponent is 2 in this example. So that's the degree. There are three terms, and this is called a trinomial, just like tricycle has three wheels. Trinomial has three terms. So the number of terms, hopefully you're realizing this, relates to the name of the polynomial. Okay, next one, 2x to the third. The degree is 3 because that is the biggest and only exponent. It is called a cubic function because there is degree 3. And it's called a monomial because there's only one term. Last row, 8x to the fourth minus 2x to the third plus 3x. There are, uh, let's see, degree 4 because the biggest exponent is 4. And there are three terms, so this is called a trinomial. Okay, I think we're ready to classify some polynomials together. Write each polynomial in standard form. Standard form just means that the biggest exponent starts and then it goes in decreasing order. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, and then also, what is the name of the polynomial based on its degree in terms? So the biggest exponent in part A is obviously the 2 because there's an invisible 1 for there. So we're going to write the first term, 4x squared plus 3x. That is in standard form because this, the 2 is the biggest exponent. And this polynomial is called a quadratic binomial. The quadratic part comes from degree 2 and binomial comes from there being two terms. And that's it for part A. Part B, 4x minus 1 plus 5x to the third plus 7x. The biggest exponent is the 3, so we're going to write that term first. Now, hopefully you're realizing that there are a couple like terms. I'm going to put them next to each other in the middle step, and then obviously in the next step we're going to combine them. So 5x to the third plus 11x, because we just combined these guys right here, minus 1. So combine like terms. Okay. Now, cubic, oh, what is this called? Well, first of all, this is degree 3, so that's going to be a cubic function. And there are three terms total, 1, 2, 3, so therefore it's a trinomial. So this is called a cubic trinomial. The last one, 2x minus 3 plus 8x squared. The 2 is the biggest degree, so we're going to have 8x squared first. Then the little 1, that's obviously the next one in line, so plus 2x, and you don't need the 1 up there, just put it there to help us. And lastly, minus 3. So that's in standard form now. The degree, the biggest exponent is 2, so therefore this is going to be a quadratic function, degree 2. And it is a trinomial because there are three terms. Adding polynomials. So take a moment, read through this description about the U.S. National Park Service. Basically, what you want to do is read the question at the end. It's asking for the total number of overnight stays in both campgrounds and backcountry. So total number means we're going to have to add. Now, I personally prefer 
um, adding vertically, and I think you would as well. So let's rewrite the polynomials. And now we're just going to add down. Nicely, they're lined up already. Um, so let's do the negative 7.1 plus 21, that is 13.9 x squared. Remember when you combine like terms, the variable does not change. It's only the coefficient that changes. Next, in the middle, we have negative 180 plus negative 140, that is negative 320x. And lastly, we have 5800 plus 1900, that is 7700. So the vertical process is nice and quick, and that completes that part. Um, basically, what we did there was we lined up the like terms, and then we just added the coefficients. So I recommend writing this down. Now, if you would prefer the horizontal method, I recommend that you look at the textbook online or if you have a, a text copy um, for this. In my past experience, everybody has preferred the vertical method, so that's why I'm just referring you to the book if you'd like to see the horizontal way. It is a little bit longer and more involved work-wise. Okay, we just talked about adding. Subtracting is coming up next. Um, remember that subtraction means adding the opposite. So when you subtract a polynomial, change the terms to its opposite, then add the coefficients. I'll just write this on this side. And again, you can do vertical or horizontal. And once again, the vertical method is preferred. So I will show you that way and then refer you to the textbook for the other way. So let's rewrite the given polynomials lined up vertically. Please take note that the second polynomial does not have a regular x term, so I'm going to leave that blank. Remember, we're lining up like terms, and there are no like terms for those. Okay, first thing, I see that this x to the third up top does not have a coefficient, so put a 1 there. Now, if it helps you, you can put zeros in these spots that are blank, or maybe you just know that that's already a zero. It's up to you. And now we're just going to subtract down. Um, I'm going to use the add in the opposite method just in case you like that. So add in the opposite means plus, and then make that a minus, make that a minus, make that a minus, and make this a plus. So we're going to have 1 plus a negative 7, that is a negative 6, x to the third. Negative 3 plus negative 5 is negative 8, x squared. 5 plus or a negative 0, or just minus 0, that's positive 5x. And lastly, 0 plus 12 is 12. So we get this polynomial as our simpler form, negative 6x to the third minus 8x squared plus 5x plus 12. The horizontal method is a little bit more involved. If you'd like to look at this, look at book and you can write this in your notes so that it's not blank. Here's the lesson check for this section. Please try it now or at least try it before the next set of notes are due.